This is the Jason Walker Show. Two-time National Sports Media Association Montana Sportscaster of the Year and three-time loser, the Jason Walker Show. The best local and statewide sports coverage featuring the biggest guests from Montana. Flint Rasmussen uh, joining us here on the Jason Walker Show. He's freaking exhausting, too. You used to dance a lot more. Yeah, I know, lady. I'm 51 years old now. The NAI Hall of Famers, Mike Van Dees joining us here, Jason Walker Show. And is it just a deal where quarterbacks have to be good golfers? Well, that's all they have time for. They don't work out. They don't lift weight. They don't do anything else. They might as well go get on the golf course at least have some fun. And from across the country. Doug Gottlieb, our guest here on the Jason Walker Show. End of the day, remember, it, it's your show. It's got your name on it. Howie Mandela, our guest here. Jason Walker, deal or no deal. The Jason Walker Show. Hey, happy Thursday. Welcome. Jason Walker Show inside the Above All Handyman Services Man Cave. And coming up today... The one and only Flint Rasmussen. He will join us to talk about the PBR in Billings this weekend. Also, uh, let's see, we'll talk uh, Cat Grizz rivalry. We'll talk um, belt buckles and much, much more. All with Flint coming up. Also, Nicole Reeby going to join us in just a couple of moments to talk about the Bengals tennis team. Opening segment of the show is brought to you by Montana Custom Log Homes, the premier log home company in the industry. With over 50 years' experience, the finest craftsmen available in the state, they'll build you a home crafted the last four generations. Check them out at yourcustomlog.com to get started today. A couple of uh, news things before we get to Nicole Reby. Of course, you can watch on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. You can listen on Podbean, Network One Sports, treasurestateradio.com. And uh, and much more. Let's go to jasonwalkershow.com for everything. Uh, the uh, big news today, Gabe Sulser, the uh, former Billing senior standout, former Montana Grizz, is headed off. Uh, Kyle Hansen from montanasports.com, the first to report on this, but uh, he's heading to the Big 12. He's going to Texas to uh, continue his college football career. He has two years of eligibility remaining. He remains, uh, uh, he is a grad transfer, and he'll be headed off to Texas. Jeff Choate, the linebacking uh, coach down there, also a co-defensive coordinator, former Bobcat, Texas 5-7 and seven a year ago, uh, Sulcer, a uh, 2017 Gatorade Player of the Year, fantastic athlete, just a stud, and uh, had a great, great career. Injury kind of riddled career with Montana, but dude's a stud, and we wish him the best of luck. There's no question about that because he is really, really talented, and uh, he'll do great things, I believe, down there in Texas. So... He actually uh, reached out to them, he told uh, MTN Sports, after he answered the uh, transfer portal. So, good news there. Uh, Also good news for the Montana Grizzlies men's tennis team. They are heading off into the semifinals of the Big Sky Conference Championships after beating Idaho State today, uh, 4-1. Grizz 15-4 on the year. And they will take on Idaho, the top seed, on uh, Friday morning. And uh, Big Sky Conference Championships continuing down there in Phoenix. So, there you go. Uh, Let's see, what else did we uh, see in the news today? I think that was about it. As far as big, big stuff. We got a lot of stuff going on this weekend. That includes tennis in the double-A, and that is the East-West crossover, which is kind of like the softball deal up in Gray Falls, except tennis will be playing over in Missoula. And joining us now on the Mike Miller State Farm Hotline, the head coach, Nicole Reby of the Bengals on the Jason Walker Show. All right, Coach. So uh, I was going to let you off the hook this week, and then you sent me a text back yesterday that said, I don't want to be let off the hook. The kids played great. We played a lot of matches, and I'm happy for them. So take me through this, Coach. <laughs> well, I, I, it was one of those uh, things where 
Uh, last week was definitely a makeup week for a lot of matches because we uh, had matches scheduled for the week prior to that. Mm-hmm. But then we had all the cold weather. Everything got shifted and, and moved. So um, most of our varsity boys ended up playing uh, four matches in six days. Mm. Or four, I should say, four competition days because we usually do multiple matches at tournaments. And so, um, Tuesday was cross town. Wednesday we had JV cross town. Thursday, I think I have that backwards. Tuesday was Missoula Big Sky. Wednesday was JV cross town. Then we had varsity cross town on Thursday, and then we were up in Kalispell for an all-day tournament. So it was just a lot of court time for a lot of the kids, and it was so exciting to really start to be able to see what we've been doing on the court at practice really start to take effect and, and play out on the court. They're just they're having so much fun, and they're getting so much better every match they play. Well, and it helps when you get to actually play, and you're not just hitting balls against each other or against a wall at Lockheed Park or whatever – it helps to play real matches, and and I, you know, I'm a big proponent of practices are great, but Allen Iverson may have had it right, Nicole. We're talking about practice, but once you're able to get out and see competition, that's I mean, you can't emulate game speed. You can't, you know, you you just can't do that in practices. So for them to get exactly. out and actually play, really, I mean one of the f- first times consistently all season long. I mean, that's, 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 that's good for them. Absolutely. And it was great because every school, you know, there's going to be some, even within school, some, some players play different, you know, have a, have a different uh, game mentality for how they structure their singles points. Others have, you know, different ways in how they're going to play their, their doubles points, either when they're serving or receiving. And so for them to really just have a bunch of experience against a lot of different game plans and strategies, and then finding ways for them to either counter those strategies and find ways for them to be successful. It was just a lot thrown at them all at once. And it was great. Like you said, you know, you can only do so many repetitions in practice before you just need that exposure to so many different types of and styles of play. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it, it's fantastic as we talk to Helena, tennis coach Nicole Reeby. All right, Crosstown, I think Capital Boys ended up with the win. Remind me how the girls ended up. Um, Helena High girls ended up with the win on that okay. one. Okay, good. Uh, good for you, the Bengals. Um, but, again, it's it's about the competition, and then you guys went up and, and did the West Conference or Western Conference up in Kalispell. And that's a lot of matches, like you said, in a short amount of time, how tired are they now? Uh, or were they on Monday after, uh, after when you got to practice? You know, Monday's energy was just a little bit lower than it has been for most Monday practices. So I think just the, <laughs> the travel to Kalispell and back, I think, is what really caught up with them and probably on the heels of all the matches during the week, too. So, yeah, Monday was, Monday was a little low-key, and that's fine, but uh, – They've, they've been back at it. Uh, we had a short practice the other day, uh, yesterday actually, just because of the we were waiting for the courts to dry. And when we finally got on the courts, you know, they were ready to hit. They just want to play. and they, they've, they've seen the success that they can have, and they just really want to focus on those areas that they are the most successful and improve on those areas that they do need to improve upon and have a little more work in as well. So who, who really surprised you with the way that they played last week given everything we've talked about, weather, lack of game matches, all of that stuff. But who really kind of stepped up and surprised you? You know, I'm not sure that really anybody just flat out surprised me. You know, I, I've been seeing what's been going on in practice. I've been seeing the effort that they're putting in. And it was just, it just seeing them improve match by match by match. I mean, we have on our boys team, we have so many first year players. And so it's just starting to click for them. And it was just really exciting to all of a sudden see, you know, eight of these guys where it's just like, Oh, that's, that's how we're supposed to. Okay. Now we get it. So it was, it was more fascinating to see the surprise on their faces when I start to put it all together. Sure. Definitely. Uh, and how nice was it to see everybody in the Western conference finally? Yeah, we uh, <laughs> we uh, finally got a chance to, to see some of the Missoula schools, which is, is great. Um, it seems like Missoula Hellgate and Missoula Sentinel both always have uh, very strong programs for boys and girls. So it was really great to get some matches against them. We played Sentinel in quite a few matches, and we uh, played some 
Hellgate singles players as well. So it was just nice to see where kids are stacking up in that Western Conference finally. And as we talk with Helen High Tennis Coach Nicole Reby on the Mike Miller State Farm Hotline, now it's East versus West. And this is a big weekend across the state because of softball and tennis all playing these crossovers. Uh, what do you expect over in Missoula this week? Well, it'll, it'll be interesting. They've kind of changed the format from what it's been in years past. And so instead of a two-day tournament where we play a bunch of different uh, schools, they consolidated it down to a, essentially a double dual format. So we'll end up playing uh, Billings West and uh, Belgrade. So uh, I have no idea what to expect. I know we played both those schools last year. Um, Belgrade last year, it was their first year in the double A. So um, it'd be interesting to see if they've had some, you know, additional players, um, you know, move into that particular school and, and just what they really have. I will be curious to see on Saturday. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's and, and tennis is different anyway, because you guys actually have sub-conferences, right, in, in the conferences. Is that, or do you still do that? Yeah, so, so tennis, unlike pretty much all the other sports, really has four divisions. It's a northern, eastern, southern, and western. And um, Helena High plays in the southern division along with Capital, Bozeman, and Gallatin High. Which makes a lot of sense because you got Belgrade that's eight miles from Bozeman, and, and which is closer, and then Butte, which is closer than all three of those. You guys are weird. in the grand scheme. <laughs> in the, I know in the grand scheme of things, when you look at a map and you're like, "Well, we have sixteen schools divided by four divisions. That's four. Uh, we got to pair somebody together." So yeah, it's it's interesting how it's evolved over the decades. I just I look at all the other sports, and then I look at tennis, and I go. Oh, where, what are we doing? Because you guys rotate too, right? I mean, it's not just, it's not always the same. It doesn't rotate every year or two. You know, that actually was uh, the case. But as of last year, when we finally had um, Gallatin High and Belgrade come on board as AA schools, that gave us 16 AA schools. So there is now no need to rotate from division to division. It's just every division has four schools now. Okay. I know it's tough with 16. Hear me out though. You've got three billing schools. There's the east. You've got three in Bozeman. You could do a, a southwest. You've got uh, Capital, Helena, and Butte. Uh, that could be um, uh, kind of southwest B, whatever you want to call it. And then you throw in, actually, you put in the five. So you get five with the Kalispell and Missoula schools in one division. There's your west. Then you've got Helena High, Capital, probably Butte and then uh, the Great Falls schools. There's your, there's your uh, central. We're almost going class A here, Nicole. You see where I'm going with this? <laughs> right, right, yep. <laughs> and then you've got six schools over in the east. Or you could still do four and do the southwest with the, you know, throw the Bozeman and Belgrade and Butte into one, Helena High or Helena schools, Great Falls schools into one. So there's, you know, and then you've got the billing schools in the east. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, I mean, there's, there's, there's logic somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> there's, I, 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 I'm like you, there's a myriad of ways that you could throw these conferences together, you know, uh, and try different things, but no, and I wouldn't be surprised, you know, in the next, I don't know how long we sometimes change takes a while and, and processes, but um, it, there, there is, you know, definitely things that can be, be looked at as far as modifying divisions, modifying, do we have these four divisions? Do we just expand it out to an east-west? What do we really want our, you know, state and divisionals to look like? Well, you, you do like you do with other sports. You put eight schools from the west, eight schools from the east, and you have a divisional in your western and eastern conferences, and then the top four go to state from each conference. And then you have eight in state. Eight singles, eight doubles teams. I'm just saying. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm right there with you. At, at some point, at some point, it will be there. I just don't have the crystal ball to tell you how far out it is. Well, you've been at Helena High for like 29 years. So, I mean, and you're only 24, which is impressive. Um, but, yeah. Okay. So, uh, this week, 
uh, take me through the girls, take me through the boys, um, and how how you expect each uh, each doubles team, especially, to, to perform here. Sure. So uh, our girls, for sure, our um, one through three singles is very very strong, and I I think they'll stack up very very well against Billings West. Um, you know, uh, last year Belgrade had a very strong number one uh, singles player. Uh, Kale Kujala had um, a very, very strong matchup with her. So uh, she will be there again uh, this year. So it should be a great matchup for those two. Yeah. Um, and our doubles teams, we've we've seen some great play from our number two and number three girls um, doubles. So I'm really excited to see where they can go. Our do- uh, two doubles team actually played the number one flight up in Kalispell this last weekend just because we had some players who were involved with some other school-related activities and could not make the trip. And so – they showed some real, real great play. So I'm really curious to see where our um, de- where our depth is on our uh, girls doubles and boys doubles. I really think that our ones, twos, and threes are going to stack up really, really well with what uh, Bozeman and Belgrade will will have. So um, it's just about looking for improvements and looking to make those changes on the court as soon as we can, instead of you know letting some games slip away that you know. Hey, there were a few deuces there that we really should have had some points. We should have, you know, been able to have gotten some of those volleys, whatever. Coulda, shoulda, woulda. Right. But if we can be more, more aggressive in our change of tactics and be quicker about our change of tactics, you know, we, we stand a real good chance to compete really strong this weekend. Well, it, I'm looking forward to it uh, because you do get, you know, you, well, hopefully it won't be. It actually doesn't look like it's going to be good weather. So you're used to that, though. Um, yeah, exactly. We even had a rain delay, two rain delays actually up in Kalispell. So we, yeah, we dealt to, with it. Yes, you're de- you've dealt with it. Um, but this will be good because you have a few matches left uh, heading into uh, divisionals in the middle of May. But this will be good for, for the teams uh, just to get out and play again and pick up where, where they left off last week and build on that growth. Correct. And that's the big thing is just building upon what they've, that foundation that they've already started. So yeah, it's just gonna it's gonna be a fun couple of weeks here and uh, playing some different teams and really seeing where they stack up before we get down into the nitty gritty of divisional. Yep, yep. Hey, uh, appreciate it, and uh, I won't let you off the hook. Next week, we'll figure out times and we'll figure out how to get you on. All right, sounds great, Jason. <laughs> I sure right. appreciate it. That is uh, Nicole Reby. Thank you very much, ma'am. All right. Talk to you later, Jason. Nicole Reby joining us. Mike Miller, State Farm Hotline. All of our guests appear via the Mike Miller State Farm Hotline. It's not just a bundle. It's your home. It's your auto. It's your life. Mike understands that. Mike gets it. Get a hold of Mike Miller State Farm in Helena today. All right. Quick break. Coming right back. Flint Rasmussen will join us. We'll talk uh, rodeo. We'll talk movies. Which is the better movie? I want to ask Flint. Pure Country or Eight Seconds? We'll talk to Flint coming up next. The uh, opening segment brought to you by Montana Custom Log Homes. Three distinct divisions, milled, handcrafted, and timber frame. They've got a whole bunch of different floor plans, 15-plus under the milled log homes. And uh, you can bring your own floor plan in. They'll create a home look crafted to last for generations. Check them out, yourcustomlog.com, to get started today. Flint Rasmussen, next, Jason Walker Show. Strength, beauty, grit superior craftsmanship our homes have it all at montana custom log homes if you can dream it we can build it with three divisions and over 50 years experience we've got you covered from a showcase home to a small cabin we make your vision a reality because every cowboy wants a castle for his queen montana custom log homes crafting homes that last for generations Everyone knows about Dinners Done Right and the convenience of the cook and carry cuisines. It's so easy to just stop by and you have something for dinner that night. But there's also one more thing you need to know about. Dinners Done Right Grab and Go Salad Bar. Yes, I said salad bar. Always the freshest ingredients along with a daily soup and nacho bar too. So the next time you are in a rush or you just want to eat healthy, stop by Dinners Done Right for the soup, salad, and nacho bar. For monthly menus and more info, it's dinnersdoneright.com. Who doesn't love being number one? When your team's dominating the standings, or your favorite band rocks the charts at number one, it feels good, right? Kind of like how it feels when you have auto insurance with State Farm. 
because making you feel like number one is an honor your local State Farm agent takes seriously. Through the good times and not so good, your State Farm agent's proud to be here to help life go right. Call State Farm agent Mike Miller in Helena today. Storewide savings are what you'll find when you shop for new home furnishings at Rutgers Furniture. This means tremendous values on Helena's largest in-stock selection of home furnishings. When you shop Rutgers, you'll find storewide savings on the furniture you want for every room in your home. And you'll also find our selection of Serta Eye Comfort, the most comfortable beds in Helena. 12-month financing is available with approved credit on most purchases over $299. Ask for details. You'll find storewide savings at Rutgers Furniture, 1010 Dearborn, Helena. Welcome back to the Jason Walker Show. Welcome back, Jason Walker Show. This segment brought to you by Rutgers Furniture. Make the quality choice for your home at Rutgers Furniture Tent in Dearborn, Helena. Hanging out in the above all handyman services man cave on this day in history, walk off and more. But uh, now it is time to check in with a good friend of the show, great friend of the show. And just a good dude all the way around. His name is Flint Rasmussen. You've got the PBR this weekend in Billings, tomorrow, Saturday, and Sunday. It's home for Flint. It's a new season, a new schedule, and uh, a new finals. And uh, joining us on the Mike Miller State Farm Hotline is the great PBR entertainer, Flint Rasmussen, on the Jason Walker Show. All right, my friend. It's uh, it's been a while since we chatted. You uh, blew me off at MSU Spring Rodeo, and I knew, it. I, <laughs> I knew who you were. I knew, I knew out of the gate you were gonna, you uh, were gonna bring that up. I yes. feel bad. I'm sorry. We're it's still okay. friends. We we're are still friends. friends. Uh, yeah. You're on the show, so um, you've been busy. How's life? Uh, busy. Um, <laughs> this has probably been the most through my entire career, probably the most hectic winter slash spring I've ever had. For one, it doesn't help that I'm older. I remember years ago, we did a whole bunch of PBR was really doing a lot of three day shows. Mm -hmm. So every weekend it was three days and it was a grind, but that was, you know, 15 years ago. So we are, you know, people still, I don't know if they realize our PBR season is now a season like every other sport. And, and it's funny, when we decided to do it, this year it's been from, I got on a plane on December 31st to Indianapolis, and I've been on a plane every weekend since. And our world finals, this is our last regular season event here in Billings, and so our world finals is in a couple weeks in Texas, not in Vegas anymore. And people had a fit, like, the hell are we going to do the rest of the year? What? You know, I wish I could watch NFL every weekend all year long, but they actually have a season. Yep. And it seems like when you do it in bull riding rodeo, it, be, it just blows people's <laughs> minds. You know, <laughs> So it's actually been pretty exciting because guys don't have that. We used to have that coming up in May. We'd get a break and everybody that was hurt could come back and make a run in the fall and you know, you don't get to do that in any other sport and kind of, it, it's been exciting for us to see guys with that sense of urgency um, to try and get to the world finals or win a world title. And funny how the cream still rises to the top, right? no matter how long the season is. So, but for us, it's been a lot of flying. We've done a couple midweek shows, Tuesday, a Tuesday in LA, a Wednesday in Everett, Washington. It, I feel, you know what? I feel like a rock star, and that's what I always wanted to be anyway. So <laughs> I've seen a million faces, and I've rocked them all. Yes, yes, you have. Um, and you still sound better than John Bon Jovi does now. Well, Did hey, you see the video? I was just going to say, I, I've been a Bon Jovi fan since college. You know, I I think he's one, a good guy, a good entertainer. But, man, some of the videos, he it's like... It reminds me, I always joked at Willie Nelson. Remember when Willie Nelson went to Shoto, Montana? Letterman brought him in. <laughs> yes. and, and I joked for years that Willie just sings the first song, first line to every song and then just talks through it. It's like, Whiskey River, take my mind. I hear you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> John Bon Jovi, don't be that guy. Like, yeah. He's struggling. 
isn't he? His voice and man, his, there's there was something wrong. It was last week I saw a video of Wanted Dead or Alive, and it was almost sad to watch because he's declined. I think up yeah. here too. Yeah. Well, you know, that's my go-to karaoke song. Hey, so I did that. Ever, I did that with a band one time in yeah. Gardner on New Year's Eve. I uh, I did it on the stage of the South Point showroom with Chancey Williams and the Younger Brothers band. There you go. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I was with. I was only with Mark Longy and Western Skies. Yeah, whoever that is. Great job, Jason. Well, they weren't. I, no, Western I'm joking. <laughs> joking. Who, oh, they were out of the shoot back then. That's what it was. It was in the ah. in the nineties. It was out of the shoot. That's yeah. who it was. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, but yeah, so you mentioned the season and the sense of urgency with these guys, Flint, and you're, it's really cool because it's like a playoff chase. It's like a pennant race in, to an extent. And this is, might be, is this one of the tightest races we've seen coming into the regular season finale? You know, I'm, so, I'm such an idiot for not really knowing points available for go-rounds and stuff at the PBR World Finals. Now, for people watching that, you know, in rodeo, it's about money. In the PBR, it's it's a point system for go round wins, aggregate wins, and then it of course goes up at World Finals. I don't know the particulars of what points are available, but in my mind, I look down to about the top ten or twelve, and mathematically, everybody's got a realistic. Well, I'll, I can't say mathematically and realistic all in the same <laughs> sentence, I guess. Everybody's got a mathematical chance to possibly win a world title, but those top five or so, uh, that is, it's really tight. Now, I see there's some guys out this week in Billings um, kind of taking the opposite approach I thought some of them would take, like Jose Vitor Leme, who's battled injury and sickness and the two-time defending champion, He's actually, he aggravated a groin injury in Nampa last week, not coming to Billings mm. because he's giving him, he's giving himself, he thinks he has a better chance to gain more points in two weeks at the world finals with these weeks off than he does coming all the way to Billings, Montana. You know, he did, Jose's a smart guy, so he knows what he's doing. Um, but you got Dalen Swearingen, the kid from New York, who's number two, Joao Ricardo Vieira, who's been in the hunt forever, 37 years old. Look for him. And then just down the line, believe it or not, this just in, the Brazilian guys are pretty good. <laughs> I feel like every time we, we talk PBR, that's, that's the story. Yeah. Um, so it is so tight. And everybody said, oh, half a season. Technically not a half a season. What we, what we did before, it's weird that people – kind of get things wrong on social media. That's hard to believe. No way. But, you know, like the last couple of years, our season has been tw 25 cities. The, I, and the, the different levels of PBR. I mean our uh, elite tour, right. the Unleash the Beast tour that's on TV. 25, 26. Well, this year it's 19. You know, it, it is in half. We always would say the second half of the season, really it was a third and now we've doubled up in the middle. We did we did a couple things different. We gained, the way I figure it, from the first of the year to May, we gained four events that we didn't used to have because our first event was on January 1st, which we never do, but we did that this year in Indianapolis. We had an event on Easter weekend, which we never do, We give it, but we did it this year. By the way, Silvano Alves did not go because he refused to ride on Good Friday. Ooh. which uh, PBR let him do that. So then we did two midweek. They were one night, but they were midweek events, LA and Everett, Washington. So in that time period, we gained four events that we didn't used to have. So we're not all that short of events, you know, a mm. few, but it kind of made it exciting. So that's kind of how the structure worked. And I, I like it. And it's going to be split up two weeks and in, uh, in the world finals in May down there in Texas, which will be super cool because you guys are loved anywhere you go. But Texas is, well, it's Texas. It's not Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And then, of course, you know, people aren't going to be without bull riding. This is for another conversation as far as how it all works. But the PBR has come up with their own draft team owners, 
team concept bull riding that's going to start the end of July, really into August. So there's going to be bull riding. And I think, man, I shouldn't say this, don't quote me, but I think the main goal here with the adjustment of the season two, hey, this we've been trying 15 years to do this. This was not an all of a sudden thing. PBR has always wanted for that many years to get off of that kind of November date because we're within a month of the NFR. Right. The, compl- the, the PBR is, we're all rodeo fans in the PBR. And I didn't mean all the people who are the head of pro rodeo or PBR fans, make no mistake. But we understand what the NFR is. It, it's the greatest event in Western sports. A lot of people would like to go to both, but they're a month apart and they can't afford to. So we've been trying to get this May thing for a long time. Ultimately, the adjustment will then be the new season, like 2023, I think might start in November instead of the first of the year. So that will expand that season all the way through. So ultimately, the big shift will work. We just needed a shift year. Yeah. for it all to happen. Well, and what's cool, too, is you're not going to compete against college football. You're not competing against the NFL. Um, plus, like you said, the NFR, which is which is super huge. Flynn Rasmussen joining us, the great PBR entertainer. Um, you get to stay home, but the work never stops for you. How's the uh, podcast going? You're killing it every week, I see. I do a, I, I do, I do a half-hour show for our PBR st- uh, streaming channel. Ride Pass that's on Pluto TV, which is a free app. It's simple, it's easy, and it's free, as the commercial said. Um, I do that, and then every other week I come out with a podcast. And um, did it different this week. Uh, I, I've been kind of real guest-based. Uh, I've had some really great names on the podcast, and I'm thankful to have connections to do that. But I used a Montana guy, Dougie Hall, is nice. my new podcast that just came out. Dancing Dougie Hall, and really it's, uh, I don't know, I hope the fans that follow me on social media from the East Coast and different areas of the country will watch, because he talks a lot about Native culture and history. Um, We even talk about a little bit about mascots and the word Indians and Redskins, and, Mm. you know, he's he's a great guy. Um, So, uh, anyway, that's, it's been fun. It's given me a different outlet. I've realized I can't just take off and go somewhere, though. I always got to be home to do all that stuff. It's like <laughs> having, you know, it's like work. Right? It's, it's, yeah. it's weird. It's, it, yeah, that four-letter word. It gets in the way yeah. of the golf game, too. You, you know what? Uh, I've always said two things that are overrated in life. Jobs and kids. What's up with that? You know, they oh. just screw up everything. So. Well, yeah, I don't. <laughs> hey, I, by the way, have uh, both your daughters have uh, basically said I'm a member now of the family. Really? What are you? What? What's your? What they say your title is? Well, they like, didn't give me. I just said I wanted to be adopted into the Rasmussen family. So, I'm I'm thinking, maybe a, a, an uncle, because. So I got it. I got one. Okay. I know what you are. Okay. Remember the you know the Brady bunch. I always wanted to be in the Brady bunch. I always wanted to be in that family. And uh, remember towards the end of the series, the weird cousin Oliver came in the little kid yes. with blonde hair and wire rim glasses and yes. you're like who the hell's oliver like what what is he you're our oliver oh i don't know if that's good or bad no i don't either so we'll just leave. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't he, be the hey, cool uncle he he got oliver got to share the bathroom with marcia and jan he can't be all bad i, I mean, guess yeah but he was uh, uh, whatever all right oliver I gotta, I gotta do some thinking. I gotta talk to them. By the way, it was fun at the spring rodeo. Um, it's so exciting. It was back in the brick, and I know you got your MSU rodeo uh, hoodie on there, um, but you got the weekend off, which was great. But what was it like as a fan to see the football team running out in front of the rodeo team? So I had a bit. I don't know that was completely my idea, but I went to Dean Folkford, who's a big booster, and the girls, and I said, here's what you need to do is, I had a little different vision of it. I wanted them all in their jerseys. They needed to be in their jerseys. And I wanted them out the center gate, flags over their shoulders, and just walking, staring down the crowd, and then stand in a line and the rodeo team run around. Oh. Production, man. Right. (laughs) But (laughs) but, uh, I think it's cool because I I don't know that we could name... 
anything that the rodeo team has ever done in the history of MSU having a rodeo, which, by the way, my dad rodeoed for MSU. Um, I don't know that anything has brought more recognition and positive light to the rodeo team like riding their horses down the football field. Mm -hmm. uh, would you agree? Is there anything yeah. they could do? It, no, I mean, because, you know, the last couple of national championships were not a part of the athletic program. Um, you know, because they were a club sport, but, um, no, I think you're right. I think, you know, cause it's the best run out in all of college football. It gets yeah. attention, you know, national sports places bring it up. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's right. the coolest thing in the world. Yeah. Like Oklahoma people say, Oklahoma state, we run a girl down the, on a horse yeah. down the field. And I'm like, just the one then, Yeah, just one. Well, I noticed everybody else in Montana started doing it. Western started doing it. Northern started doing it. I can, I can tell you one that'll never let a horse run on their field. The Grizz? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Um, well, they, they've got a lot of other crap on that field. Um, uh, hey, I'll tell you this. Uh, let me, let's come back to that. But here's a topic. Okay. Okay. For you and me. A few years ago, Bobby Houck said something about... This whole Bobcat Grizzly thing isn't even fun anymore. Do you remember he said yeah. that? It's gotten to the point of vitriol, and I agree with him. Yes. I agree with Bobby Houck. I, uh, my, my sister put it a good way, and I'm wearing a Montana State Rodeo sweatshirt. I'm a, uh, my girl, my folks went there. My sister went there. Will went there for a short time. <laughs> um, my kids are there. My parents are proud alum, alums of Montana State. And as my sister says, cheer unapologetically for your team. But this, listen, we are lucky to live in Montana. You can cheer for Western, Carroll, Rocky, MSUB, Northern, Providence. I, I think somebody cheers for Providence. I don't know. Somebody. Um, be a Bobcat, be a Grizzly. What? How? What a great place to be and have all this yep. pride in these cool programs. And you can watch great football and great basketball. I mean, I saw a guy post on April 2nd on social media, a Bobcat logo. And he said, when it's April 2nd and still realize your team is worthless. And it was like, do you have that kind of time? Like, I don't. I, I don't understand it. I, I'll tell you this, and I don't even agree that at the semifinal game, Afterwards, when everybody stormed the field, that they played the Moni Moni song. I don't agree with that. What do the Grizzlies have to do with the Bobcats going to the national championship? Guess what? The Grizzlies kicked our ass. Yeah. It was the best, which created the best turnaround I've ever seen in a college season. Good job, Grizzlies. They were tough. Yeah. The Grizzlies were really good this year. They were. I went to a game at Washington Grizzly Stadium for the first time in my life. I went to the Eastern Washington playoff game. Mm -hmm. And I, I was, the, the stadium is nice. Washington Grizzly Stadium is very nice. Um, it was well built, well constructed, well added onto. All of that stuff is great. But after being in Auburn two weeks before that and seeing SEC football, that was a football stadium. Now, do the, you know, are the Bobcats Cup? Yes. Everything's getting better across the state. It all takes, you know, we all know the money. And wins, wins help, and the year of the Bobcat continues. So, yeah. um, but well, I do have respect for. I mean, I have Grizz on the show all the time. I have Bobby Howick sure. on. I've had coaches, and and Jace Lewis was on the other day. Could you imagine if Jace Lewis had gone to MSU? He calls it Bozeman State, by the way, like Howick. But yeah. if he had been in the same linebacking core with Troy Anderson, hey. Oh, how cool would that be? A Dylan kid, a town. Jason's from Townsend. Yeah, right? great right. kid. That that kid's a great man. He's a great player. But that would have been cool. Yeah. yeah, but you know what? Both the Bobcats and the Grizzlies know that even if they're not starting, even if they're not starring, they need that undercurrent, that little foundation of Montana kids yep. to spread that what that what it means to be a Grizzly, what it means to be a Bobcat. And it keeps the fans hooked too. Yep. And, and both programs, uh, Vegan does it well. Of course, Choke got it. Uh, Bobby Howe gets it. Um, can I tell you something? And I know he's not listening to the show. You know who I never, I thought, who I really respected the guy, I thought never really got it was Rob Ash. Mm -hmm. And I think he's a great coach. It was a different setting, and that's not a slam on it, but 
You need to get it yeah. in this state to yeah. keep people hooked. Well, yeah. that's why, I mean, and, and Ash, Ash was hired and came along. This is, I mean, we're getting way off topic, but he came along at a time when MSU needed that complete 180 from yeah. the Mike Kramer days. And Kramer got it. He definitely understood the rivalry yeah. as well. But, no, I mean, it's, it's fun. It's great. I love it. I did, you know, I spent an entire weekend calling the State A over in Missoula and Dahlberg. It's a great place to watch great. basketball. Because uh, you're right there on top of the action, which is right. it, it's awesome. And their softball field is awesome. Well, uh, I'll say this, and then we can change the topic. I, I even, right over there, I got some new uniforms made. Uh, my Cooper Tire bosses are great. I wear Cooper Tires, but I have a new Bobcat-themed uh, uniform to wear in the arena here in Billings. And But I will not. I make jokes about Missoula. It's hard to rodeo in your sandals, whatever. Those are Missoula <laughs> jokes that we all do. But I will never do the FTG thing. No. And I hate it. Uh, I told our music guy, uh, he and I have, I have a couple of them I work with that produce music for the show. I said, no money, money. I'm not, uh, not touching that. I cheer unapologetically for my team. Mm -hmm. But, you know, everybody yeah. had a good season this year. And yeah. one of my best friends in the world, Tom Reynolds, the coach of Shelby High School, his son, Rhett, 6'9 kid, is going to play for the Grizzlies. Okay. Now, I'm maybe not going to go put on a Grizzly shirt, but I'll be up there cheering for him. So. Um, hey, I, well, I did the rodeo in Bozeman on SWX with a, with a Grizz, Caleb Barrett. So, um, oh. great bullfighter and uh, a, a good dude. So, that was, yeah. you know, I, yeah, they're fun. Uh, Flint yeah. Rasmussen joining us on the uh, Jason Walker Show, Mike Miller, State Farm Hotline. Um, we brought up Troy Anderson. You got the draft uh, starting tonight. Uh, he's not going to go in the first round, but there is a lot of potential for tomorrow or early Saturday morning for his name to be called. And that's pretty darn cool for a, a boy from Dillon, Montana. And he, keep, he keeps, have you noticed he keeps moving up? Yes. Like one list I saw is like number 59, fourth among inside linebackers. I hope people in Montana realize what we're watching. Will he be a, do any of us know if he's going to be a, a long time 10, 12-year player in the NFL. Nobody can predict that at all. But enjoy this moment of a kid from a ranch in Montana. And it's an old-school story because most big-timers, whether it's basketball or football, they're not just playing at their local high school and go play four years at their college and get drafted like it used to be. There's academies and summer football. You, you know that. Mm -hmm. It's a different world. This is a kid that's a rancher from Montana. And I remember watching him as a junior at the state track meet in Bozeman win the 100 and 200. That's when Paige was there with Shoto. I was coaching the Shoto track team. And I thought, this guy's a freak. Like, he's like 6'3". Who, who, who is this kid? And uh, so we better enjoy it. Well, my prediction is I think he may be moved up to the second round. Don't yep. you possibly? I do, too. I do, too. I agree. Yeah. So Troy's going to get drafted, and I think Lewis Kidd's going to get drafted, yep. and I think Daniel Hardy and Lance McCutcheon will get free agent tryouts. I agree. How's, how's my prediction? I think all four of those are, uh, are pretty darn accurate. I really believe so. God, I should have a show. Yeah. Yeah, well, How'd you know, we, it, it, we could call it According to Flint. That's, that sounds kind of mm. – uh, it's got a ring to it, I think. Well, hey, I'm just thinking outside the barrel here. Just <laughs> wow. <outside> <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was. Hey, uh, and I'll tell you my biggest thing with Lance McCutcheon, who I love. I don't know how fast he is. I've never seen his stuff. I don't like, either. Because that's the key. The NFL is speed. Yeah. Man. It's it's all about speed. Uh, his brother's anyway. a pretty good defensive back at Western, by the way. What's his brother's name? First name. Um, that's a really good question. I called one of their games this year. I called the a couple of their one. games this year. McCutcheon. Yeah, the other the McCutcheon. Other McCutcheon. Yeah, I or think maybe it starts he's with the an, original no. McCutcheon, and Lance is the other one. I don't know. <laughs> no. Hey, uh, it's Superhero Day today, National Superhero Day. Oh, if you is? were a superhero, what would you be? Superman. Okay. You know, I, I'm watching, uh, have you ever seen the, the things they post, like Montana State football posts them where they have a camera with a question above it, and the players walk by and answer mm -hmm. the question? Yeah. And they're like, what superhero would you be? And so many of those guys answered Batman. Batman doesn't have, he's just a guy in a suit. Now, he's rich. He's That's, rich. Yes. 
No. Super, I want to fly, man. I, if you flew on airplanes as much as I did, <laughs> you'd want to be Superman. <laughs> I think you'd not want to fly as much as you're on airplanes. So, uh, it's got to be Superman. Okay. It, it, um, I mean, a no-brainer. It's, okay. Well, and Lo- Lois Lane, smoke show. Well, well, yeah, but Batman had Michelle Pfeiffer. She's crazy. Come on, man. She's I don't know. No, because Batman gets beat up because he's just a guy. He's Bruce Wayne. He doesn't right. have any superpowers. So, but who was the better Batman of, of all time? Who's the best Batman? Um, I think. And there's only one answer. Because I remember the when that first movie came out, Michael Keaton. Yes. So, And I think I like Michael Keaton because he was so far off of being Batman that then he became Batman. Yeah. But Christian Bale rocked it pretty well. Yeah. I'm, not a, I'm not a Christian Bale fan. Yeah. He, he's I mean, 310 to Yuma was a good movie. 310 to Yuma. I had a, I had a couple of friends in that. Like Dutch Lunick from Browning, Montana. He's with the uh, Indian guy. In the, the, anyway. Yeah. Really? Yeah. True. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah. When when's your cameo on Yellowstone? Oh, screw Yellowstone, man! Come on, it, they won't. I don't know. I'm friends with Forrest Smith. I I know Taylor Sheridan a little bit, kind of. All those guys. Nothing. 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 Never snows on Yellowstone. You notice that? <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Hey, you know what? I, I was thinking. Okay, see, I always have an introspective take on everything. Mm-hmm. Have you ever noticed that? Yeah. I think I kind of, it dawned on me why Montanans have a little chip on their shoulder a little bit about Yellowstone. And I don't think it's just that it's Hollywoodized and it, oh, it doesn't make sense. You can't just go to Great Falls like that. You know, <laughs> I'll tell you the bigger picture here and what when it kind of hit me. When we had that big blizzard down here a couple weeks ago, mm-hmm. um, you know, Southeast Montana has been in a drought for two years. There's no grass. And it dawned on me when my friend Lloyd Ketchum, great bullfighter, sent a picture and he had a pile of about 15 dead calves that he had found under stow banks that he couldn't save. And I think the chip on Montana's shoulder about maybe Yellowstone is, it's made everybody want to ranch in Montana. But they never see that. No. They, they never see a spring storm that you're thankful for because it might end a drought but kills 25 of your calves. You're out there working all day long just trying to save your animals, trying to feed your animals. But then somebody comes in and wants to fork over a bunch of million dollars just to be in Montana. I get that, but I think that's the chip is it never, it hasn't really shed a light on what true ranching in Montana is. And there's such a pride in Montana of what it really is, that it, it rubs people the wrong way. Do you think I'm on track a little bit there? No, I do. I just enjoy watching it because I'm a Kevin right. Costner fan. Um, yeah, I am too. And then I just like Rip a lot. Cole yeah. Hauser, he's a good, he, I mean, it's, yeah, I mean, but I see it. I mean, it's it's Hollywoodized. It's, it's, but that, Which I mean, that's fine. You've been in movies. You know that. You know what Hollywood's like. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'll tell you what, too. I have been in some great, great big budget movies. Um, what's the one with Kiefer Sutherland that he was a rodeo clown? The fact I can't think of the name of it shows you how big it was. Maybe Cowboy Up or something like that. Oh, um, yeah. He, well, he was a clown in that one? Yeah, he was a rodeo clown. He followed me around one summer. He'd show up at rodeos and watch me. Huh. And we became friends through that. I don't. Um, I don't remember. I know he was in it. Yeah. Or was uh, it the but, cow, the Cowboy Way? No, because he did. That was no. The, that was with Woody Harrelson. Woody Harrelson. Yeah. They were. Yeah. And then yeah, Cowboy Up. I don't think I've seen that or one. Some. I'll look it up. I, okay. And then, of course, the longest ride with Scott Eastwood. Right. I'm yeah. cameo in that. And I, he did. We all did some stunt work in it because they can't do everything that cowboys do. So. When Scott Eastwood is naked in the shower with the girl, that's actually me. That's I, not he, he, again, that's he not couldn't do all his own stunts. I mean, come on, it's just Scott. You know. He, oh, the, I, the, I just rewatched Gran Torino the other day, and he was he's such it. a punk in that. Yeah, yeah. he's a little punk in he it. Is. Good guy, by the way. I've he's heard. Nice guy. I've heard. Yeah. Okay, what are your residuals? Because, like, I talked to Dean Alexander about, like, Amazing Grace and Chuck, and he still gets, like, 18 cents. 
Oh, yeah, that's they filmed that Bozeman, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. I tried it out for a part. Terrible movie. Oh, what, oh, what a terrible movie. It's a classic. You got and the, the dude from CSI's in there. Oh, yeah. The main guy. That's, yeah. That's right. No, Gregory, Gregory Peck. Um, Peck's in it. How Jamie you Lee Curtis. Such a good movie for <laughs> such a ta- terrible movie. Hey, I'm the same way. When that movie first came out, The Longest Ride, well, I got paid to go spend a week in North Carolina, so you get paid pretty well. Right. And all you do is sit around and eat. That's it. If people think the movie sets are exciting, holy crap. It, <laughs> it's so boring. And uh, and there was a locker room full of bull riders that they used, are all our guys. And they snuck beer into the ice machine, and they were drinking beer all day. And when the movie found out, they were so pissed. <laughs> they were so mad. <laughs> But, uh, and then I'd get residuals when it first came out. I'd get 800 here, 900. Now I'll get like a dollar 16. Yeah. You know, and yeah. Okay. But that's how those movie stars, can you imagine like the movie Titanic? Oh. The residuals that, that Leonardo DiCaprio just gets every year that he probably just is like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, well, oh, they probably don't eight. even see those checks. They just, you know, their agents yeah, they take care of it, management, all of that. Yeah. Um, anyway. All right, I saw a tweet the other day from you. Uh, I think somebody said you were going to watch True Country, or what, did they mean Pure Country? Pure Country. Okay. Oh, yeah, Pure Country. I was, I was sitting here. I, had, I got home. I'd been traveling all week, and I turned my TV on, and Coal Miner's Daughter was on. Right. Oh, that's what it was. It's an ama- I never realized what a great movie that is. I don't remember. And then he goes, what are you watching next, Pure Country? And I looked on the guide, and that was the next movie on. Ah. Uh, like, Buddy okay. Jackson from the road crew. I wish you'd quit bringing your boyfriend on my bus. You know, George Strait. I mean, you can't. Speaking of Academy Awards. Oh, man. Um, no. Did you see Pure Country 2? Absolutely not. Okay. My wife has a big deal with this because it's Pure Country 2, but George Strait doesn't play Dusty. He plays George Strait. What? Yeah. No. No, thanks. Yeah. No. It came in the package. We ordered a Pure Country for like five bucks, and then you got the other one with it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, no. I George Strait as himself. Yes. Ah, yeah, yeah. Great. Uh, okay, so what was the worst movie from the nineties? Um, Eight Seconds or Pure Country? The worst one. Yeah. Uh. Because they're both really bad. When you go back now and look at the acting from 30 years ago, it was really, really bad. I don't think Eight Seconds is a bad movie. Uh, um, is my sound okay? Because yeah. you're fuzzy. No, 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 you're good. You're good. Okay. Um, the thing with Eight Seconds for any of us that know the people... If you don't know the whole story, I think it's a good movie. Portrays Rodeo okay. The guy that got screwed on that movie was Jim Sharp because he traveled with him. And I talked to Cody Lambert about that on one of my podcasts. And I said, why did Jim Sharp get screwed so bad? They didn't have him. He said, well, they need for Hollywood. Three people worked better Mm. in that traveling together scenario. I thought... Stephen Baldwin was great as Tough Hedeman. Um, I don't know that he portray- he did portray the dickness of of <laughs> Tough Hedeman <laughs> pretty well. Lambert is not a poet, you know. Right. But he he brought up a good. Lambert was like Jim Sharp. Rode all his bulls and never said anything, so they couldn't fit him. He didn't fit in a movie because right. he was boring. He won everything, and he never talked. So. But you know what they do? So I think Eight Seconds is the better movie than Pure Country. Okay. How's that? that no, that's but good. Here's, here's a little tidbit, and then I know you got to go, but here's an interesting story. People love Lane Frost stories. When Cody Lambert starts talking about Lane, I, all of us listen. It intrigues me. He said when Lane would, those guys, their riding percentages back then rodeo, rodeoing were outlandish. You know, 90% they'd ride. But when Lane Frost would get bucked off, the part people didn't see is he'd smile and wave to everybody, and they'd get in the car, and Cody Lambert says he's never to this day seen a cowboy so mad about not winning, about getting bucked off. So if they were left a rodeo at night and had to drive all night to the next rodeo, they liked it when Lane would get bucked off 
because he'd be so mad he couldn't sleep. Oh. So they'd crawl in the van and just fall asleep. So they'd get up in the morning, oh, and uh, Lane would still be driving, and he'd be getting tired. Jim Sharp would crawl up beside him there, and uh, he'd say, what do you think, Razor? What do you think happened on that bull last night? And Razor would say, I think he just fell off. <laughs> oh! And you'd get mad again, and Razor would crawl in the back and go back to sleep because they just gained another couple hundred miles. <laughs> That stuff intrigues me. Oh, that's a fantastic it story. It intrigues me, man. Yeah. 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 No, that's a, I mean, it was a, it's a great movie um, yeah. as far as it, it's that one or Longest Ride. Yeah, long, Longest. Yeah, Longest. Well, the Longest Ride movie, I like the other story better. Okay. Not the bull riding story. But, but I will say the Longest Ride used... PBR riders, the PBR set, mm -hmm. PBR bulls, we were all in on that, you know, so mm -hmm. it was accurate in that sense. So, yeah. yeah. They, they, you can't, I mean, what was the one with, uh, what was the movie with uh, Scott Glenn when he was a bull rider, the aging bull rider? Had Ben oh. Johnson in it? Right, I remember. Uh, not bad, not terrible. Yeah. Um, the thing is, rodeo people get so, um, we get really bent out of shape of how they portray rodeo. Um, I wonder what I wonder what NASCAR guys think of watching Cole Trickle. <laughs> they you know, absolutely hated the movie. Exactly in NASCAR, it, every everything. I mean, watch a football movie; it, it's the same. They got to make it for Hollywood, and so it's just the way it goes. Um, if we ever made a true rodeo a movie about rodeo, it'd be boring. But yeah, anyway. yeah. No, I mean it would. The best conversations are behind the shoots. Yeah. Um, yeah, we don't, yeah, it, it's a different world, I think, than what Hollywood wants to portray. Cowboys don't sit and argue about who's tougher <laughs> or, man, I conquered that bull. It, you know that. Yeah. It, it's just different than that. So um, We've talked about the buckles before. Where are they from? The ones here? Yeah, the ones behind you. Well, I'll tell you, I, I have a whole bunch stored away, and this buckle display thing I bought at the Cowboys and Candlelight, MSU banquet last year. Okay. And so I went to, I have a storage unit. You know, that's what happens when your marriage ends. You have things like storage units. Yeah. Um, let's see. Probably the best ones I have. Um, I'll pick them here and then I'll, uh, this one. I'll give you a, I'll give you an example of each different face. Okay. So I have, I have eight of these. I know. Is it backwards? No, oh, no, it's no. It's it's good. Okay. That's PRCA Clown of the Year. That's 05, the last year I PRCA rodeoed. Okay. That's why I have that one. I have. I won that eight years in a row. This is the 2005, the last year I worked the Wrangler National Finals rodeo. Oh. So I have eight of those. My actually, my brother Pete wears one, so he has one of those, and my daughter Shelby has one of those. My daughter Paige has a Clown of the Year buckle. This is the. Uh, that's what a world PRCA world champion buckle looks like. That's the Coors Man in the Can Award, which is a prestigious honor. Yeah. I have seven of those. My dad has uh, one of the first ones I won. Nice. But that's a gold. Bu that's the gold buckle. And then every year at PBR finals, we get buckles for working the finals. And oh, okay. this is a very unique. It says entertainer. On yes. It. So that's cool. Um, wait, I'll show you one more that means a lot to me. I did the Pendleton Roundup from 1998 to 2005, and when I left, they gave me the famous um, three bucking horse Pendleton Roundup. Nice. It's like a director's buckle or a champion's buckle, and here's a little trivia from the Pendleton Roundup. If you have this buckle on, you can get in any gate uh, on that facility for free Ooh. with that buckle. Nice. So, well, you're Flynn yeah. Rasmussen. You get in anywhere free. Yeah. Yeah, right here. Right. <laughs> right. Anyway, hey, uh, I'm glad you asked. I I like buckle. The, in the words of Montana Silversmiths, every buckle has a story. Yes. You know. Yes. So. Uh, and I'm in the process. I still. It's been a year, but I'm going to get a couple of mine. Uh, sh my show logo ones. You should. Yeah. yeah. Um, before I let you go, you get to do the Dusty Glico bull riding this year memorial this year. Yeah, I had some, uh, I was able to add, so I can do some lower level PBR stuff. I, I have to go to all the big ones like in Billings this weekend. 
But if the Touring Pro, which is the lower level ones, I can work those. It's kind of extra. I'm going to, there's one in Kalispell on Friday night I'm going to, and then the Dusty Glico in Great Falls on Saturday night I'm going to. Just added a few to the summer that were close. Um, so, yeah, I, I do a few things in June and July extra besides the main tour. I have not worked around Great Falls for so long. So I hope people understand, well, it'll be a great show, and it'll be good to see everybody there. Yeah. Um, same up in Kalispell. I haven't been there in forever. So I don't know, that, that really is a chance to go kind of get back. Uh, we talk about it, the guys I work with. It gives us a chance to go work the events that were the reason we wanted to do this job in the first place. Sure. There's not TV controlling anything. There's not sponsor stuff that overrides what we do. So it's it's pretty fun. I am nursing a bad knee right now, oh. so I need to get through about July and then have it cleaned up. I have some meniscus things going on that, because right. my knees are 112 years old. Right, because so. you're, yeah. I still yeah. use the line about the old lady that came up to you and said you used to dance a lot more. That was like three years ago. Yeah, man, you used to get around. Yeah, no kidding, lady. I'm 54 years old, <laughs> 52 years old. What do you expect? Yeah. Like, yeah, and I know you got to go and I got to go, but everybody, I get, this is the week I get, oh my God, are you so excited to be working in Billings, in state, which I am. But it's probably the busiest week and the most pressure filled event that I do all year because there's those people that saw me in wherever or saw me here 20 years ago. And there's a pressure there, uh, an in state pressure of, you know, people say, well, you used to do this. You used to do that. And so it's hard, but I like seeing everybody, yeah. you know. But I graduated with 36 other kids at Shoto High School, but it is astounding how many people I went to school with <laughs> this week. <laughs> so, <laughs> About 1.1 million in the state. Yeah, and yeah. I, don't have, I, don't, I don't have any tickets. Sorry. I want to know. Well, maybe be, for you. I'm just oh, putting that out there. Um, I can't. I have uh, my daughter turns four on Sunday, so we're having oh, a big okay. birthday party, and uh, so I've got. I actually have to miss a golf tournament to go to her birthday. She won't remember anyway. I, that's what I tried to tell my wife, but yeah, my girls are uh, at a college rodeo in Missoula, yes, they and are. then they're driving over Sunday and singing the anthem. Here. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. It's always a great time when they sing. Um, it's always a great time to catch up with you. I have just yeah. I love talking with you about non-PBR stuff. Yeah, no. Well, that's the way it goes. Because you are yeah, an encyclopedia. You're a plethora of entertainment. <laughs> I'm a sponge. <laughs> and, hey, uh, but people ask me, I get it from young guys, where do you get material for your shows? How do you come up with, pay attention. You just got to pay attention. Yeah. You know that, doing yeah. your show. You just got to pay attention. Hey, I have an idea for you. You could rip on school boards in the state of Montana this weekend. Yeah, I'm kidding. I know. I, I, I hey, I, I'll, I will say I don't usually rip on stuff that I don't get the whole story. Right. So I never know. Yeah, I, but I'm with you. I know what you're saying. Uh, we are going through a teacher and coach supply crisis in Montana, and then you see some of the stuff going on, and you think, well, well, well that's fine. My brother Will used to say, uh, "Don't bitch about the coach," because he coached. Yeah, uh, basketball. Don't bitch about the coach unless you are willing to do the job. Or officiate. So, officiating, same way. Yep. Yeah. That's hey, right. uh, enjoy, uh, enjoy the weekend at home. Enjoy the relaxation. Take care of the body. Have, uh, have some Pendleton. You can get it now from Shelby. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she still owes me a bottle, by the way. I have some right, right over there. I got a new shelf. I'm going to send you a picture. I had a, my, my aunt's or my wife's uncle built a whiskey shelf for me. So I'll, nice. show, I'll send it to you. Good work. Yeah. Good work. Hey, uh, have fun down there. And it's always good to catch up with you. And uh, you can come on anytime. Hey, we'll do it again soon, buddy. Thank you. He's so great. Flint Rasmussen. The great Flint Rasmussen. All right, quick break. Come back. Wrap things up. Jason Walker Show. Hang on. 
Storewide savings are what you'll find when you shop for new home furnishings at Rucker's Furniture. This means tremendous values on Helena's largest in-stock selection of home furnishings. When you shop Rucker's, you'll find storewide savings on the furniture you want for every room in your home. And you'll also find our selection of Serta Eye Comfort, the most comfortable beds in Helena. 12-month financing is available with approved credit on most purchases over $289. Ask for details. You'll find storewide savings at Rucker's Furniture, 1010 Dearborn, Helena. Father's Day is coming fast, and what more would that great dad in your life want than a full detail from Auto Concepts? Or maybe he would just prefer a lift kit. It's also camping season, and now is the perfect time to outfit that rig with a winch just in case. Auto Concepts is your home for everything for your vehicle, including updating your car stereo system too. Auto Concepts also has gift certificates for dad or yourself. Visit AutoConceptsHelena.com. Auto Concepts, the auto enhancement professionals. Yes, it's true that Montana is a long way from the Gulf Coast, but you can bring that Cajun flavor home with a stop at Cafe Zydeco. From po' boys to classic sandwiches, Cafe Zydeco has all the best Cajun in town. Are you in the mood for seafood gumbo or crawfish etouffee? Maybe you're craving jambalaya with some shrimp and grits. Head in for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, or call ahead for pickup or delivery. Cafe Zydeco will fix all your southern cravings, even on a chilly Montana day. Cafe Zydeco is a proud sponsor of the Jason Walker Show. Jason Walker Show on a Thursday. If you missed anything, jasonwalkershow.com. Let's do on this day in history real quick. It is uh, April the 28th. It is Take Our Daughters and Sons to Work Day, Blueberry Pie Day, Great Poetry Reading Day, and Superhero Day. 1930 on this date, the first night organized baseball game played in Independence, Kansas in the uh, Negro Leagues. 1961, Warren Spahn, his second no-hitter, is the age of 41. 1972, the courts awarded the 1968 Kentucky Derby to the second-place winner due to the winner being given drugs before the race. Hmm, wonder where we've heard that from before recently, Bob Baffert. Uh, 1998, Baltimore Orioles lose an AL record 21 games in a row. And Margaret, born on this date, 1941, in Sweden. John Daly, born on this date, 1966, the great golfer, whose son at Arkansas in college golf just signed a uh, NIL deal, name, image, likeness with Hooters, like his dad. And uh, on this date in 2016, Conrad Burns, the great, great man and uh, senator from Montana, passed away at the age of 81, this date, six years ago. All right, let's wrap up the show. The walk-off presented by Cafe Zydeco, where the Big Easy meets the Big Sky. If you missed anything today, this week, just go to jasonwalkershow.com. Back next week, full slate of lineup. It's going to be fun. Monday night, 7 p.m., Jefferson High School Gymnasium. Special board meeting regarding Clint Lang. Let's get his job back. Make sure you stop in Cafe Zydeco for all of your great hunger needs this weekend. We'll do it again Monday in the above all handyman services man cave. Hope you have a great weekend and stay safe. Take care of each other. Love one another. See you now on Monday. Produced by the Jason Walker Media Company. Any reuse, rebroadcast, or retransmission without the express written consent of the Jason Walker Show is strictly prohibited. Just listen, watch, and enjoy.